While the Carolina Panthers continue to wait on Jadavion Clowney, could another homecoming be in order? We'll talk about it right here on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, your team every day. That's our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me. Julian Council on Twitter at Julian Council, where on Fridays throughout the offseason, I'm right here on the show answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions either at me or DM me to get your questions in for this week's edition of the weekly Friday mailbag right here on Locked on Panthers. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. The NFL owners' meetings continue to go on down at the Ritz-Carlton in sparkling, sunny Orlando, Florida. We heard from Dan Morgan on Monday. We heard from Dave Canales on Tuesday. We'll get into what Dave Canales had to say here on the show momentarily, but we are still in a holding pattern. The Panthers are in a holding pattern. You, as a Panthers fan, are in a holding pattern, waiting to find out what's going to happen with Jadavion Clowney, when is he going to make a decision on whether he's coming to Carolina back home or if he's going to go to play for the Jets or stay with the Baltimore Ravens? When is he going to make a decision? I point out to you that he's never at any point in his career in the National Football League signed a deal in March. He has agreed to deals in April and in May and last year agreed to a deal with the Ravens in August. But after a nine and a half sack season, the reports are He's looking to cash in. He wants his money. He's 31 years old, and I understand he's getting up there in his career. Things may have not panned out the way that a lot of us would have expected out of Clowney when he went number one overall out of South Carolina, but still had a great season with the Ravens and is a guy who wants to get his money. So will it be in New York with the Jets, in Baltimore with the Ravens, or possibly here in Carolina with the hometown Panthers? So we're all waiting on seeing whether that's going to be a homecoming of Clowney coming back to Carolina the Panthers, they're also working on a different homecoming with a player who also went to South Point High School in Rock Hill, who also played for the South Carolina Gamecocks and has been here before in Carolina. The man we're talking about is Stephon Gilmore. Joe Person of The Athletic reported this on Twitter on Tuesday, saying that Panthers have reached out to free agent cornerback Stephon Gilmore after about a possible return to Charlotte per league sources. So Stephon Gilmore, who was here back in the 2021 season, the Panthers traded for him a surprise move earlier on in that day. The New England Patriots had let the entire league know that, hey, we're about to get rid of this guy. You can either come get him or we're going to release him. What y'all want to do? The Panthers decided we're going to come get him. We're bringing Gilly back home to Carolina. We're bringing him back home to Charlotte. And I was hyped. That was one of it's one of the first shows, but that was the first full season I covered the team for Locked On Panthers. And I was not expecting that at all. The Carolina Panthers being aggressive, going out there and getting a former All Pro Defensive Player of the Year and Stephon Gilmore, bringing him back home after losing J.C. Horn. The team was off to a great start. It felt like they were going all in. They had already traded for C.J. Henderson, which after J.C. went down, made a lot of people feel like, oh, this is a team that's not trying to have a drop-off here. Now, Scott Bitter, the former general manager at the time, said that it was a move for the future. Well, the future is now, and he's no longer here in Carolina, that being C.J. Henderson. But the Stephon Gilmore move was an aggressive move that was out of character for this organization and how they've gone about things historically here in Carolina. I was hyped, and... Unfortunately, we didn't get to see a ton of Stephon Gilmore. He was coming off of, I think it was a groin or a quad injury, whatever it was that started him off on the pup list, and he couldn't play until mid part of the season. And then once he did, he was on a snap count. And by time he was able to play where he did start three games, 
he went down with another injury, and that was really the story of the year for the Carolina Panthers. Still was a pro bowler that year, by the way, which is interesting how that worked out. But he's a phenomenal player. Went to Indianapolis after Carolina, played well there, played in 16 out of the 17 games. Last year was really good in Dallas, played in all 17 games plus the playoff game. He's another player that's getting up there in age. He's 33 right now, going to be 34 in September. But I would like this move. It's a little bit different to me than Clowney. They're still aging players at positions of serious need in Carolina, and they're going to be short-term fixes. I totally understand the similarity there. My difference between the players, though, is Gilly's been a consistent player his entire career. A former top 10 pick who has always played at that level. You're not seeing just the fluctuating zero sacks to nine sacks to two sacks to nine and a half sacks that you're getting from Clowney. With Gilly, you're seeing the consistent play and he's also been here in Carolina, and he, of course, has a house in the area and resides here. He, apparently, his neighbor was. I don't know if Scott Fitterer is still living down there, but he was neighbors with Scott Fitterer uh, down in, I think, the Waxai area here in the Charlotte area. Would be cool to have Stephon Gilmore back here. He's probably hanging out right now at home. It's not like the Panthers got to go too far to find a meeting with him. Just meet him at the local coffee shop or wherever you want to and tell him why you should be a Carolina Panther. Looking at his season last year, according to PFF, he was the 35th best corner in the league out of 127, had a 71.2 overall grade. His coverage grade was 69.3. That was 45th out of 126 corners. His run defense grade, 72.9, 26th out of 121 corners. And here's the thing, too, about 2021. And when the Panthers went all in in the cornerback position by drafting J.C. Horn eighth overall back in April, then trading for C.J. Henderson once J.C. went down, then trading for Stephon Gilmore, we never got to see J.C. and Stephon Gilmore out there as a cornerback tandem. Why not do it now? J.C. Horn, hopefully, fingers crossed, prayers, whatever you want to do, burn, go do a rain dance if that's going to help. <laughs> I don't know. J.C. Horn, if he can stay healthy, to have Stephon Gilmore coming off a good season where he's been durable the last two years, I know getting up in age concerns there. To have those two guys with Dane Jackson as a third corner, Troy Hill, and then still adding in a younger corner, possibly at 33 or 39, to come in to get some quality snaps, but also to learn from a former All-Pro. I'm for this, absolutely for this position upgrade by bringing in Stephon Gilmore for just a single season. If you want to give them two years where it's really one year, go out there and do it. I am curious to how much money he wants to get paid, considering he has been healthy the last two seasons. He did play well for a Dallas team and Dan Quinn's defense that was really good all year long until they weren't against the Packers in that wild card round game as the playoffs started. I'm curious how much money he wants. If it's going to be kind of the situation where Clowney, he's trying to look for some top dollar of whatever's available, uh, considering that team has spent a lot of money, that may not be what the Panthers can do. But as far as comparing those two, I would like to have both of them. If Clowney wants to come to Carolina, great. If Gilly wants to come to Carolina, great. I would love to have both of them, but understanding that these are short-term solutions for the Carolina Panthers, and maybe the best thing for the team would be to Go ahead and draft the corner in the second round and have that guy come in and just throw him into the fire and let him learn. Same case with outside linebacker. When you look at edge rusher, they brought in DJ Wonham. They have Caleb on chase on who's going to be a rotational guy. It may be the best thing for the Panthers to draft Adisa Isaac or Chop Robinson or Darius Robinson or Chris Braswell, at Alabama at 33 or 39. Have those guys come in and rotate with DJ Johnson, be opposite of DJ Wonham and just figure it out because those are guys are going to be your future. Gilly. And Clowney, neither one of those guys are going to be long-term options in Carolina. But the Panthers do need to fill those holes on the roster. And the best way they could do it, potentially, is by having double homecomings with former Gamecocks, former South Point High School players, and Stephon Gilmore and in Jadavion Clowney. So we'll wait to see what happens with Clowney. We'll also wait to see what happens with Gilmore, as Carolina Panthers reportedly have reached out to the free agent corner, who could be coming back home to Carolina this season. So TBD on both of those moves. The NFL owners meeting going on in Orlando. Some rule changes, which I guess we'll talk about at some point. The kickoff rule is interesting to me. Now, Johnny Hecker, who's the Panthers punter, came out and said, this is good. So I'm going to believe the player who says it's good. Now, the other day on Monday, when there's a lot of talk about tackling being banned, 
A lot of players are pissed. The NFL PA told them, don't do this. And the owners, of course, as they often do, ignored the players and did what they wanted to do. I'm probably against that more so than this, which I'm going to be open-minded and see how it works out. Dave Canales, he spoke to the media on Tuesday morning, provided some updates on what things are going to look like on the offensive line of Austin Corbett moving to center and among some other things. So we'll get into what he had to say and a few of my takeaways from those comments here in just a moment on Locked on Panthers. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney of the Sweet 16. It's almost here. North Carolina, NC State, Duke, and Clemson, four ACC schools. 25% of the tournament remaining is in the Sweet 16, and I cannot wait to see what happens. And FanDuel been all over it since the ACC tournament started, since March Madness began. Y'all need to be on it as well. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a number one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book right now. New customers and guys, that can be you. Get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit bandulcom slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut the nets down. We heard from Panthers GM Dan Morgan on Monday morning. On Tuesday morning, Dave Canales, Panthers head coach, also sat down with the media to provide an update post-free agency as the team begins to shift its focus towards the upcoming 2024 NFL Draft in Detroit, Michigan. And I'm going to go over a few things that Canales had to say and let you all know what I think about what he had to say here right now on the show. Austin Corbett, he is going to be playing center for the Carolina Panthers. we got Icky Aquino staying there at left tackle. Damian Lewis coming over from Seattle to be the starting left guard. Then at right guard, Robert Hunt replacing Corbett as a starting right guard. And then Mr. Reliable, Taylor Moten back at right tackle. A reworked offensive line that still has three familiar faces. And going back to the 2022 season, the three best offensive linemen on that roster that year are still the guys who are expected to start this year, one of them being in a different role, and that is Austin Corbett. Dating back to his time in college at the University of Nevada, he has played tackle. He went to Cleveland, played guard, went to the Rams to play guard as well. He has never been a full-time center. Now, I was trying to figure out what the deal was a couple years ago when he was playing center for the Rams back in 2021, the same year the Rams went on to win the Super Bowl before Corbett signed here in Carolina. I was talking to our old pal, Jordan Rodriguez, to cover the Panthers for the Observer, then the Athletic before going back out west to cover the Rams. And she was reminding me that Corbett was actually playing center because Brian Allen was out with an injury in the Rams were trying to see what they had in Corbett potentially as a center, but they felt like a better fit for their zone scheme was have a smaller center instead of someone of Corbett size. So he slotted over at right guard where they excelled, won a Super Bowl, not because they made that move, maybe in part because they made that move. Then Austin Corbett's been the right guard here the last couple seasons coming off though, two significant knee injuries, back back seasons last year in ACL the year, well, last year in MCL or meniscus or whatever. Yeah, it was meniscus or MCL. Either way, last year, a less significant knee injury, same one, same knee, but then an ACL previous to that. So Corbett's now going to have to learn a new position while also coming off of another knee injury. As far as what I've read, from what Dave Canales had to say on Tuesday morning, there is no indication that he's going to be limited once OTAs begin. Another player, though, will be, and we'll get into who that is momentarily on the show. But this is what Dave Canales had to say about Austin Corbett moving over to center, saying for us to have the opportunity to go get the guards that we did, to add Austin into the mix at center, to be able to piece it all together, the continuity of the tackles of a couple of new guys, a lot of guys just talking about the uh, is talking along the line it's just really a dream scenario and so i love this challenge i love this challenge for austin to really branch out of his comfort zone a little bit at this time but i also just forget about the football part i just love the personal chemistry of what we're building there because the offensive line is definitely about chemistry and absolutely and i've said this before in 2021 the talent level on the offensive line was not up to par for the carolina panthers but the fact that they had to play start rather 13 different combinations, 17 games, they were doomed. The Panthers, if McCaffrey would have stayed healthy, it did not matter. If they were going to have that many injuries on the offensive line, they were not going to have success. Now, last year, offensive line injuries clearly were an issue. Seven left guards, eight different right guards. Icky's regression 
was that a part of the issues there with the injuries inside? Is that the same reason why Bradley Bozeman, former Panther, he struggled last year because of the injuries around him? Maybe it has to be a part of, of the reason why he also came out and said he was not a scheme fit for what they were trying to do last year. If you have a banged up offensive line, you're constantly changing out tackles and guards and centers. You're just not going to have success. So it's great to see, though, that they have three guys coming back who have been here and now going on their third season together in Moton, in Aquanu, and in Corbett, paired now with a guy in Lewis who is going to understand the offensive scheme because he's played in it before in Seattle and has a great understanding of this offensive coaching staff, then bringing in Robert Hunt, who Dave Canales is really high on. He thinks he's the best guard in the NFL. If the Panthers got the best guard in the NFL, damn, I love love that signing if that is the case still a lot of money but that's the case you, you can't be upset about it especially their aggressiveness aggressiveness to go out there and do it and then you add in Brady Christensen into the fold and Josh Nyman and then the younger guys in Mays and in Zavala developing you have a good situation as far as continuity and also as far as talent goes and we'll see they got to stay healthy got to be out there together and if that's the case then I should ex you should all expect and I certainly expect to see far improved offensive line play here in 2024. I still, though, believe the Panthers need to address the center position in the draft. They don't have to go get someone in the second round or the third round. They could wait till pick 101 in the fourth round to do it on day three. It's just apparently a deep center class. And we'll talk to some draft experts over the next month to get more of an understanding about how deep it is. And if there is somebody who could be available on day three for the Panthers, that could eventually be the starter maybe in 2025. We'll, we'll talk about that down the road. I still think that's going to be an area where the Carolina Panthers are going to want to address that position. And all the reporting that I've read so far this offseason has been the Panthers are planning to address it at some point. Didn't do it in free agency, so you have to guess they're going to do it in the draft. Another uh, little quote here from Canales, just talking about the transition for Austin Corbett, saying, well, it's, it's a specific role for a guy who's a leader. You can get away with it when a guy isn't vocal. You can get, you can get away with it when a guy is in a true alpha type of personality, you can get away with it, but you'd really like your center to be like the middle linebacker, to be the quarterback of the offensive line. Corbett is that. He's a man's man. When he talks, people listen. He's just naturally built for this. So Austin Corbett being a leader, he's going to be someone who they're going to rely on, of course, at the center position and believe this is going to be not necessarily a seamless transition, but a transition that he is going to be able to tackle and manage at a high level. We'll see. How that works out, uh, it's interesting that they're going to do this to somebody who's never really played the position as far as actually in the NFL or in college. He's done it during practice. It's a bold strategy, so hopefully it pays off for them. A couple other things. Uh, Dave Canales did say that Robert Hunt was a top priority for the Carolina Panthers. Not A, but the top priority for the Carolina Panthers once they hit free agency, and we saw that as he was their first signing the five years, $100 million contract. should also tell you that he was the top priority. Fantastic last year with the Dolphins. Gave up basically no pressures at all. I believe it was five on the season, according to PFF. Huge signing. And Dave Canales reminded people, on Tuesday morning that it's not just about protecting Bryce. He wants to run the football. They got some beef to run the football now. Icky, people talk about he needs to play guard. We know what he can do as a run blocker to have him, to have David Lewis there on the left side. Then on that right side, Moten can do his thing. And then Robert Hunt, Chuba Hubbard, buckle up, buddy. You may have a thousand yard season and it may be way more than a thousand yards this year. We will see how that works out. And yeah. Looking good about all that. Deontay Johnson also another thing. Dave Canales talked about just how he's been eyeing him for a couple years, and now he's here in Carolina. Should be exciting to see how all of that works out. But the motto so far this offseason from Dave Canales, anytime he's spoken, has been getting the football right. And a part of that is fixing Bryce Young's feet. We'll talk about that and also provide a couple of other notes from what Dave Canales had to say on Tuesday morning here in just a moment on Locked on Panthers. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports 
music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game time takes guesswork out of buying tickets. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total up front, so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On. That's L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. The focus this year is not on wins and losses, but the focus for Dave Canales, New Panthers head coach, is. Getting the football right. Now, Dave did come out and say, though, on Tuesday that if the Panthers do all the things right, like take care of the football and protecting the quarterback and be able to do yada, 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 that he believes they're going to be in contention for the NFC South. Well, of course, if you play clean football, if you keep your quarterback upright, if you put the other quarterback on the ground, you're going to win games. You're going to be competitive. That's kind of how this whole football thing works. So I did see a lot of fans look at that and say, yeah, I heard the same thing from Matt Rule. I heard the same thing from Frank Reich. This is one of those things where while he's going to say things, Dave Canales is that are going to be like really inspiring and his, I, you got to love his optimism. Absolutely. Uh, what he says really doesn't matter. <laughs> what matters is what happens on Sundays in the fall. I, in large, and I told this to y'all when the press conference happened. I don't care what Dan Morgan has to say. Don't really care what Dave Canales has to say. What are they going to do? Heard a lot of words throughout the years, and this organization has never had back-to-back -back winning seasons, which is embarrassing. And this team has not been to the playoffs since 2017, and they have bungled the quarterback situation so many times in the last five, six years where they felt the need to trade DJ Moore, to trade Brian Burns, to trade Christian McCaffrey because of all the missteps in the past. Like I, I'm done with the words, the talk, talk. Just go out there and win some damn games, man. But it is important that his focus is – on the fundamentals, just getting the football right, as he simply puts it. And that he's trying to work with Bryce Young and his footwork. There was a great video put out there by the NFL Network. I think it was Tom Pelissero. It's like the insider show they have. I think it's like at noon Eastern. It's with him, Tom Pelissero, that is, and Rapport and Mike Garofolo. Pelissero had asked Dave Canales just to explain, hey, what are you going to do with Bryce Young and his feet? And he did a great explanation. So I would encourage you to go out there and to go find that video. I think I retweeted it. If I haven't, I'll go retweet it at Julian Council on Twitter. So listen to what Dave Canales had to say about fixing Bryce. And it's such an opposite approach to what the previous staff took with him last year, where their focus, as was reported by Joe Person and Diana Rossini in the report about how it was a Hunger Games like culture last year in Carolina where their focus was just getting Bryce out on the field. They wanted him to understand the playbook, to be able to take a leadership role within that huddle and in the offense. That's what they were focused on. They weren't focused on his feet until we hear the reporting that midseason, oh, maybe we should go back to things that Bryce did at Alabama. Maybe we should start working on the fundamentals. Why weren't you working on that to begin with? Like the, we are so... Not we, because I don't work for an NFL team. But nowadays in the NFL, they're in such a rush to play quarterbacks right away. The Packers, who are always good for the most part, have not been doing that. They gave it time with Aaron Rodgers. They gave it time with Jordan Love. And they've had success. Rodgers going to the Hall of Fame. I don't know if that's going to be the fate for Jordan Love that he's going to be a Hall of Fame quarterback than in his career with the Jets <laughs> like Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers did in their careers after the Packers career was over. But he looked pretty damn good last year after waiting. And he got off to a good start. Then he struggled. Then it was red hot at the end of the season and had a Favre-esque mistake in that game against the 49ers on that Saturday evening. So he's going to fit in just fine in Green Bay for the next 10, 15 plus years. We should take a page out of that book. They just waited. They were patient. And I understand that. With the rookie contract, you want to be able to go out and sign players and you want to know who your guy is because by the time you get to year three, the fifth-year option. But as I've talked about with y'all before, we see so many times year in and year out where teams just don't exercise it. 
Does it really matter? What matters is making sure you have the right guy and getting the development right. And if you can't even just work on the basic footwork, because if your feet don't match what you're doing up top, you're just not going to have success. So we've heard that about Sam Darnold, where his feet work, his footwork was never great, which is still a problem to this day. Good luck with that, Vikings. We heard about Baker Mayfield, him not having his footwork correct. But Dave Canales worked with Baker, and he mentioned Baker in that NFL Network video about we got down to basics with him. We got down to basics with Gino. Got down to basics with Russell Wilson. If you can't get down to basics of a young quarterback, how are you going to expect him to succeed in the long run? Last year, you want to talk about all the failings about the offensive line, about the lack of a running game, about the wide receivers, the tight ends, and their inefficiencies. Really, where they failed Bryce at was the fundamentals and having him ready to play the game from that standpoint. They never needed to rush him out there. I understand that you probably didn't want to watch Andy Dalton play last season for the Carolina Panthers. And I certainly didn't want to sit there and watch 17 games of Andy Dalton. Maybe that, maybe that would have been the best thing for Bryce Young and for the organization as a whole. Maybe Frank Breck would still have a job if that were the case. I, I don't know. But what I do know is Dave Canales is saying all the right things. And I do believe based off what he's been able to do the last two years of Gino and with Baker, he is going to implement those same principles. And after that, it's up to Bryce to go out there on the field and to get it done. So I'm encouraged by hearing that, but also from the empirical evidence that we have for the past two years that Dave Canales is going to absolutely practice what he preaches when we down the OTAs and the rest of the offseason on the field with Bryce Young. Some other things Dave Canales had to say on Tuesday uh, brought up free agent pass rusher DJ Wunham, who's expected to miss OTAs. He did confirm that he suffered a torn quad back in December. He is still recovering from that. Not ideal to have right now your top edge rusher. It's Wunham and DJ Johnson who are the starters at that edge spot currently. By default, until the Panthers potentially bring in Javion Clowney or some other aging veteran to be a one-year stopgap to the next guy who could potentially be DJ Johnson, who's someone that they draft uh, night two of the NFL draft next month. It's not great that he's going to miss time in this defense in that we're not going to really see him on the field until August. And it's never good to have a player coming off an injury who you signed. It has not worked out in the Panthers favor in the past so we'll see if it works out this time with DJ one who's going to miss OTAs and I would imagine also mandatory minicamp but should be back in time for training camp here in uptown Charlotte Dave did say though that he's comfortable with the current pass rushing group and acknowledge the team has high hopes for last year's third round pick DJ Johnson I'll remind you that hope is not a plan having high hopes does not mean that's going to work for you what you need to do is to develop the player and put him in a situation where he can succeed He's also already old as hell for a second-year player. Hate that draft pick to this day, but you can only hope it works. And finally, another little tidbit, which I found interesting, is brought up by Mike K. I think he's the one who asked it, that Dave Canales would prefer to have a third quarterback who is someone with experience and not have that as a developmental spot. They already have a developmental player, and that is Bryce Young, who's also their starting quarterback. They have an aged quarterback who's a veteran in Andy Dalton. It would probably make sense, especially if you're going to use that spot on some player, use it on someone who's actually played in the league before and someone who would be worth having out there as an emergency third quarterback on Sundays. I look at it as not that important. The Panthers not utilize it last year. You're taking a roster spot for a player who you hope to never play. But if it is somebody who can come in, be a mentor to Bryce, can help build this culture and could potentially help the team win a game if ever called upon that makes a lot more sense than going out there and getting some random off the street to develop for what <laughs> you know all right that's gonna wrap up this edition of the locked on panthers podcast part of the locked on podcast network host by yours truly julian council again y'all subscribe and follow the show for free on YouTube, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where on Friday, I'm right here on the show, answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions, either at me or DM me to get those questions into me now. But in the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole. As always, keep pounding. And I'll talk to you all on the Thursday, as we'll be joined by Matt Miller, NFL Draft Analyst, over at the Worldwide Leader of Sports.